Today I'm checking out two Asus laptops, the Zephyrus G16 and Tough A14, both coming with the new AI9HX370. But are they any good on the performance side or is AMD going all in on AI? The A14 is by far my favorite, weighing in at one and a half kilograms and being 14 inches of course. And if you thought they sacrificed thickness in favor of size, think again, only being 1.69 centimeters, nice. It's also CNC milled aluminum, marketed as military grade for whatever that means, but the result is no flex and a rock solid build. But it's also stylish, with some game accents, but is very minimal overall. The G16 on the other hand, sports a larger 16 inch design, weighing in at 1.85 kilograms, but is just as thin as the A14 at 1.64 centimeters in height. It opts for a much more stylized design, still with CNC and machined aluminum, but much more minimalist, though it supports a nice LED slash light as Asus calls it, the keyboard and trackpad on the G16 are acceptable, the trackpad being a standard precision touchpad with what feels like a glass finish, although the keyboard I do have some gripes with. The spacing and placement is a little off, causing me to misalign button presses on mostly the left side of the keyboard, and the keys also felt a little large in relation to the size of the laptop, but at least there was no issues when it comes to actuation. The A14 trades a glass surface with a plastic finish, and it felt as good as the G16s, but on the keyboard side of things, I didn't experience any of the same issues. Overall, they're both great, just with a few little nitpicks with spacing on the G16, although that could just be me. They did not skimp on the ports on either of these as well. The A14 on the left side comes with a HDMI 2.1, Type-C USB 4, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2, and a headphone combo. Flipping around is another 3.2 Gen 2 USB, a 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C with display port support and a micro SD card reader which is a nice touch. Similarly on the G16, over on the left side has a HDMI 2.1, USB 4 Type-C, a 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A, and a headphone combo. And flipping around again is a 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C with display port, another 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A, and a full-size SD card slot this time. The screens on either of these machines are nothing short of amazing. The A14 opts for a much more balanced approach with an IPS panel, but with great color representation, covering 100% of the sRGB spectrum with a 2.5K resolution, a 16x10 aspect, and is also 165 hertz. And that's backed by three millisecond response time which is typical for most internal displays of this class but it also includes G-Sync which is a nice bonus. The G16 on the other hand is a whole nother level. It's still 2.5k resolution but as OLED has an insane color accuracy with a delta E of less than 1, covers 100% of the DCI-E P3 color space and supports Dolby Vision. But taking it a step further it sports up to a 240Hz refresh rate and a 0.2 millisecond response time. And I mean wow you really must see for yourself how crazy the screen is on the G16. But for being an IPS, the A14 screen is still exceptional, don't get me wrong. The small overall size means even when pixel peeping is still going to be razor sharp. But either way, both are exceptional for gaming content creation. On the A14, you get a dual firing speaker setup, which is nothing fancy. They have good enough soundstage and get decently loud, but aren't particularly anything special. But I mean, what were you expecting on a laptop this size? The G16 though is where it's at, with a four speaker setup with two subwoofers and two tweeters. But the positioning of the speakers is really where it makes a difference here. The woofers being positioned on the bottom, and the tweeters facing upwards, which really give it that oomph, with a loud and full sound stage. <laughs> Now time for the main event, which is Ryzen AI. Is it just branding or is there actually power under the hood here? The HX370 and either of these laptops come with the brand new XDNA2 based NPU. So does it do anything useful or is it just marketing fluff? Well, first up I tested Amuse 2.0 beta, which uses AMD's XDNA super resolution to upscale images. Honestly, it's pretty impressive to see this running on a laptop. Photos sharpen noticeably and detail actually improves significantly 
and both laptops manage this smoothly thanks to the dedicated NPU, meaning the CPU and GPU aren't really bogged down doing AI calculations. Next was LM Studio, an offline AI assistant. And this is pretty interesting. It runs fully locally, so no internet needed. Although the NPU didn't seem to be utilized, it would automatically default to the CPU. And the only option was to enable GPU utilization, which would use either the integrated or dedicated GPU, depending on whether or not it's plugged in. So it's a bit of a bummer if you ask me. Then we have Camo Studio, turning your smartphone or webcam into a high quality webcam with enhanced video quality, background blur, and better lighting through AI. But much like LM Studio, it didn't seem to utilize the MPU at all. And many of these effects and features are literally available in the default camera app, apart from a few other features. AMD provides a list of other Ryzen AI compatible software, like Adobe Photoshop's neural filters and various productivity tools. So the ecosystem is growing, but at a snail's pace. And that brings me to Microsoft's Copilot Plus, which launched last November. But despite the fancy branding from everything I've seen online and my own testing, it just seems like the standard Copilot right now. The touted extra capabilities are not noticeable or well implemented yet, so don't expect anything revolutionary just yet. Overall, is Ryzen AI worth it right now? It is a neat bonus, but for most average users, it's still in its early days. Taking a closer look at the HX370 though, it combines two types of cores, Zen 5 for high performance and Zen 5C for efficiency. Unlike Intel though, both support SMT or simultaneous multi-threading, meaning you don't lose any threads. The Zen 5 cores are the heavy lifters, boosting up to 5.1 GHz and sharing 16 MB of L3 cache, and the Zen 5C cores are optimized for low power, maxing out around 3.3 GHz with 8 MB of L3 cache. All cores get their own 1 MB of L2 cache though, which is great for a Responsiveness. You also get AMD's most powerful integrated GPU yet, the Radeon 890M. Though both the A14 and G16 ship with discrete GPUs, with the 4060 at 100 watts on the A14 and the 4070 at 105 watts on the G16. Memory and storage are solid across the board, with 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X running at 7500 mega transfers and a 1 terabyte PCIe 4.0 SSD in both models. So no compromises there. Taking a close a look at power and thermals. First off in Prime 95, our clocks maintain themselves pretty well on either laptop, at least for the Zen 5C cores, averaging around 3.3 GHz at about the expected boost clock. On the Zen 5 cores though, the G16 sustained around 166 MHz higher boost compared to the A14, but occasionally the A14 would peak above the G16s, but only very briefly, and the A14 overall appeared more inconsistent closer to the end of the run. Power draw tells us that on average the G16 drew 7% more power, which is expected considering the G16 also averaged higher clocks, as I mentioned. However, they both peaked at 80 watts. Finally, looking at temperatures in Prime 95 we see that the A14 averaged 97 degrees Celsius, with the G16 averaging 95. When gaming in Cyberpunk of 1440p at the high preset, the A14's Zen 5 cores clocked quite a bit lower at 2.3 GHz, while the Zen 5C cores clocked at around 2.6. The G16 on the other hand, were in parity in terms of clocks on both the Zen 5 and Zen 5C cores at around 2.6 GHz. I'm not too sure why this is, it's pretty odd behavior to see the Zen 5 C cores on the A14 clock lower than a Zen 5 cores, especially since when we look at temperatures for the CPU, where the A14 was about the same as the G16, even slightly cooler, though the A14's temps seem to be indicative of its limited cooling capacity due to size, while the G16's is due to a lack of ventilation due to an emphasis on design. But either way, the temperatures are pretty bad overall. When looking at power draw in both the CPU and GPU in either of these laptops, the A14 CPU drew 15 watts, with the GPU drawing around 94. Similarly, the G16 drew 17 on the CPU, with the GPU drawing 102 watts on average, which is about what you expect considering the difference in power and GPU model. Lastly, looking at GPU temp and clocks, the A14 maintained a high average clock compared to the G16, which is expected as the 4070 laptop GPU usually clocks lower than the 4060 laptop, but temps were in the low 
80s for either, which is quite close to the temperature limit, so temps aren't that great either for our GPUs. In terms of thermal design and upgradability, the A14 is pretty easy to get into, with only 11 Phillips screws, all the varied sizes, which reveal a dense cooling setup with two shared heat pipes, and an extra to cool the CPU and GPU MOSFETs and power delivery, as well as a GPU VRAM. Fans are also rigid and made from metal, which is good for longevity. Upgradability is lackluster though. RAM is completely soldered, and you're left with a single extra M.2, in addition to the already populated one, and M.2 networking. The battery appears to be a 73 watt hour, which is pretty decent for this size, and overall it seems like they've effectively used the limited space quite well on the G16. This one uses 11 T6 torque screws, again all of which are different lengths, and oddly two are behind a rubber gasket for some reason, which to me seems pretty redundant but I digress. Popping open the lid reveals yet another quite dense layout with two shared heat pipes and an additional two on the other end. Fans are still metal, there's also an additional fan in the center. Speaking of M.2 slots, much like the A14 you get an additional slot, but again no interchangeable RAM, so I assume and soldered. Other than that, you've got a nice large 90 watt hour battery on the bottom. And battery life is beyond exceptional on either of these. Compared to the Nitro V16 with its 8845HS and the Helios Neo 16 with its i7 14700HX, these are just leagues ahead. Gaming battery life is, of course, what you would expect, lasting 60 to 70 minutes, but it really comes down to them being a gaming laptop, of course. Versus the Neo 16, the G16 had on average almost five and a half hours more battery, and the A14 versus the Nitro V16 had three and a half more. Now looking at benchmarks, it's no surprise that the G16 and A14 perform pretty well, although it shows that the A14 is slightly ahead in most cases for whatever reason. For instance, in Blender in the BMW test, which is a more burstier workload, it shows the A14 ahead marginally, but considerably ahead in the more drawn out classroom render compared to the G16, but it's impressive to see performance near or even exceeding the Neo 16, which is a much bigger and beefier laptop. The HX370 is not the level of the 7945HX or 13980HX, but considering how thin these laptops are, it's pretty dang impressive. Cinebench multi-thread with the 10 minute throttle test shows the A14 leading again, and the same goes for the Chromium code compile. So this pattern could suggest due to limited ventilation on the G16, it could be more considerably throttled, but our thermal testing kind of conflicts with that, as we saw worse thermals and more inconsistencies in terms of clocks on the A14, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. Still though, in 3D Mark, the A14 loses against the G16, which is of course not surprising given the superior 4070, but it's not really a difference to write home about. The A14 thoroughly outperforms the Nitro V16 and Triton 500SE, despite only having a 4060, which really comes comes down to the increased power budget available to the A14's 4060. The G16 can't quite match the Neo 16 however, which could be indicative of its limited cooling ability as we saw the GPU approaching its limits in our thermal testing. The Neo 16 just has a far more superior cooling design and far more space. Into the storage benchmarks, and the A14 outperforms in this regard, I suppose they're using different SSDs here, and this does make a difference, but it's not like you're getting a terrible SSD on the G16. Gaming is solid, but don't expect desktop level FPS. In our standardized testing in 1080p, the G16 narrowly outperforms the A14 in some cases, and in others it was ahead. Expect frame rates in the range of 100 on either of these at high to ultra settings in rasterization. Averages for 1080, both the laptops hold their own, though the G16 edges out the A14 by around 5 to 10 percent. 1440p shows more of the same though, as now we're getting frame rates in the 60s, although occasionally in the hundreds, at least on the G16. Performance overall is not going to be far off compared to the other 4060 laptops on the A14, but considering the portability, it's still impressive gain. This time on average at 1440p, the G16 now leads by 10% against the A14, which has doubled the increase at 1080. We only tested two ray tracing titles, but at 1080p in Cyberpunk reveals only a marginal difference between the A14 and G16, with the A14 leading in lows. F124 though shows a much wider gap however, with frame rates exceeding 65 on the A14, but the G16 pulling ahead with almost 80 frames. 
but lows weren't far behind the A14. And averages of 1080p ray trace show a 14% increase on the G16 compared to the A14. Finally, a 1440p ray tracing. Both perform pretty close together in Cyberpunk, although the A14 only pulls ahead in averages versus a Nitro V15, and the same goes for F1, although there's more favorable gains on the A14 versus a Nitro V. In 1440p averages, we drop down to around an 11% increase on the G16 compared to the A14, which is not surprising given how GPU limited we are. So, are Ryzen AI laptops worth your money? Well, the G16 and A14 do make a compelling case. They're slim, they're powerful, and they have great displays, and a hint of future-proofing thanks to AI. But let's talk AI, because, you know, that's the whole selling point here, right? The Ryzen AI9 HX370 genuinely delivers on its promises, enhancing real-world performance, but the key takeaway here is not just the raw performance, it's about its potential. And Ryzen AI is still young and software support, though promising, is still just starting to gain traction. So if you are looking for a laptop that is ready for today's tasks while future-proofing yourself for tomorrow's AI-driven workloads, then Ryzen AI is indeed worth a serious look. But if AI is not your priority for you just yet, you'll still get excellent performance and efficiency gains from either the G16 or A14. Anyways guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also make sure to click this video on the screen right now.